Well, hello and welcome back. It is once again time to fix something, and today on the workbench, we're looking at another PS5. This is a digital edition. I do not remember the problems with this one. Uh, we'll just kind of figure it out as we go along here. I, I didn't look at the uh, any of the information on it. Just got it out of the box, plugged it up, and then we'll see what it does. We okay. We beep, but we don't do anything else. Okay. And it's a beep every few seconds, not constant beep. So I don't remember what that means. We, we, get, we don't even get a, a hint of a light. So I'm thinking a short of some kind, but maybe not the HDMI encoder. Seems like that. Seems like with the short HDMI encoder, it was beeping. Like every time you press the button, it would beep, uh, as best I can remember. So, all right, let's get some covers off. Let's just see what we're, uh, what we're looking at here. All right, well, she has been opened up before, we can see, but it looks like the most of the screws are here. That's kind of busted up right in there. Kind of common. Uh, I do see one missing right in there. Okay, so the majority of the screws are here. What are the chances that the fan connector is ripped? Nope, not ripped. Or, or, or is it? And kind of loose, but nah, not ripped. All right, let me get on into it. All right, the uh, side cover is off here, and first thing I noticed is the uh, ribbon cable to the LEDs has been disconnected and is routed in there in a funny way. So, is a, is this a beep on? beep off or whatever or beep on off whatever you want to call it but a good way of hiding that is disconnecting the ribbon cable get my hands on this thing let's get it hooked up let's just see if we are getting a light for a moment okay what is it doing now nope still no light unless that cable is totally broke Oh, we do get a light. Ah, oh, great. A quick on off. Mm. Fun, fun. Okay, let's get it inside the workbench. I think we've done about all we can do out here. All right, well, here we are inside, and I've decided to go straight to the uh, code reader on this one. It's just cut to the uh, heart of the issue maybe. Let's just see if we can figure out what kind of codes exist on this. So I've got my, uh, my UART adapter soldered on there to the appropriate points and I've got a connector that's got to get some power into it and then it should start detecting the uh, PS5. So I'm going to plug this in if I can catch it. Alright, got power on it. Should start seeing the PS5 in a moment. There it goes. All right, let's read the last 10 error codes. Option two. We have another bad piece of memory. Okay, that's pretty pretty obvious. It doesn't always work out that way. It, it sometimes, uh, I have to tell you, the, uh, the error codes you get are ambiguous and you know kind of don't really lead you anywhere but that's pretty yeah, that's pretty direct right there okay bottom bank six alrighty so we need to find a piece I'm not sure what kind of memory this has see if I can tell if we can tell if we can zoom in there what kind of memory is this is it micron is it Samsung uh, I believe that's gonna be uh, oh it's Skynix SK or SK Hynix, however you pronounce it. Um, hmm, do I have some of that? Good question. Well, we need one. Let's see if we can find one. Either that or I'd swap them all out. I really don't want to do that. All right, let's take a look at this chip under the microscope. Take a look at the part number. Here you can see it pretty good. Um, and I've looked around. I don't seem to have any of these chips. Uh, most of the donors I have are like EDM10 and EDM20 boards. 
This is an EDM033. So this is one of the later boards in the in the FAT series. Um, and that's what seemed to be when they switched to this SK Hynix RAM. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just pull this chip off and see if just maybe we have like some uh, some bad solder connections underneath the chip. There's a chance. It, it, it's happened before. Could be, just, could be a bad chip, but I'm going to try taking it off. See if any of the pads look kind of gray, like they were never, you know, bonded very well. And uh, well, if it is, we'll try reballing it and putting it back on there. Otherwise, I'm probably going to have to wait for a while to to get one of these chips ordered or or find a donor or something. So yeah, let's get it off there and see how it looks. Well, those look pretty good. Let me get them in focus. Can't really say any of those look bad as far as on the board. Let's look at the chip itself. Hmm. Those all look pretty good. We may still try, since I don't have a chip, reballing this and putting it back down. Uh, we'll just waste some time if it doesn't work, but let me give that a try. I'll reball this chip and we'll put it back down there.
Well, here we are back out in the garage. We have reballed our memory IC right here, number six. Um, I'm not very hopeful this is going to work, I'll be honest, because uh, those pads did not look bad at all. Yeah, we'll see. But I think I'm connected. Just see what happens. Uh, my my ribbon, ribbon connector is connected. Nope. On it, right back off. Okay, so we need a memory IC, I believe. Uh, they are available on AliExpress. I'm looking at three to four weeks to get some here. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me get something ordered. That's all I can do. And we will continue this repair when a new memory IC arrives. All right, a quick update. I said I didn't have any RAM, but I found this board in my parts. Um, it's a continuous blue light of death, but it does indeed have the, uh, if you can see it, SK Hynix memory on it. So, yeah, 
I think I will steal one off this board as opposed to waiting a month to get it from China. Um, I can always replace it. So let's do that. Let's pull one off, reball it, and uh, see if that see if that fixes our problem. I'm I'm very hopeful that it will.
well here we are back out in the garage again uh, I have pulled a donor uh, Ram IC reballed it and we are ready to test so hopefully that if that was a good Ram IC this should be working uh, I need to get this fan propped up here where it won't just beat itself to death when it turns on mm. All right, stay there. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. She stayed on. That's progress. She stayed on. Still nothing on the monitor, although I think it's getting ready to lock. Any second now, come on. There it goes. All right, we're doing a storage check. Excellent. I think we're going to be working. So it was a bad RAM IC. It wasn't just the re the reball didn't fix the other one because, you know, I could have messed up the reball. Who knows? But um, I don't think so. We definitely needed the number six RAM IC. Excellent. All right. Uh, I already cleaned up the liquid metal while I was in there. Let me put this thing back together and we'll give it a final test out. How's that sound? Well, I'm getting ready to put this uh, PS5 back together. And I've noticed another potential problem that I had not noticed. Um, this is a digital edition console, but it's a disc edition board in here. So this is not the PCB that came in this chassis. Uh, you can see it has the uh, four pin connector for, to power the uh, Blu-ray drive and the ribbon connector for the Blu-ray drive. So this did not come in this chassis. And of course the problem is, and this is, unless the uh, uh, you know the flash memory this the firmware has been changed in it uh, It will look for that drive, but it won't update otherwise it will not install an update if you can't see its uh, Blu-ray drive so I need to test that and if it won't update then I'm gonna have to you know pull the uh, board back out and pull the uh, That nor I see the flash memory off and correct that so let's test it. All right Well, I have uh, downloaded the update. She is attempting to install I can't remember at what point it throws up the error. There it is. Something went wrong. Okay. So we need to take this board back out and uh, adjust the firmware so that it is a uh, digital edition. So we will not be looking for the Blu-ray drive. Well, I'm glad I found out before I put it all back together. All right. We have it in the reader. And I've already read it once. I will read it again. I actually will read it. Usually I do four times. Read it and save separate copies of it. And just to make sure I've got a good copy of it. And say save as. It already exists, of course. Browse. And that one right there. And I'll make a underscore two and save. Save. All right. I'm going to do that a couple more times. I'll be ready to, to uh, convert it. All right. So I did uh, dump that four times. So I have four, four copies that should be identical. But just to be safe, I'm going to make four copies of it. So if I say validate or patch, there should be four options and it's the same file. With a different underscore one, two, three, and four. So let's just pick number one. And while oh, that looks fine, we are going to switch between disk and digital. Option number five. Okay. Disk, digital. We want digital, so zero. And it has patched it. Okay. So that should be a working uh, bin file. Okay. Let me get that written back to the chip. And we should be good to go. All right, here we are out back in the garage again. Our, our NOR has been updated to make this a digital edition. Um, and so far, I think we're working until it's update. And let's just see if it fails. All right, we're getting close to the moment of truth. Downloading off of the internet. 
is it going to apply it? It looks like it is. Okay. I think there's another part to this, isn't there? So I think there's another uh, part to the update that will start here now. And we are working. I think this is going to work. I've got a few missing screws I need to chase down. Uh, the ones that come in from the back of the chassis, you know, that hold the, the whole guts of it, come from the other side. Those are missing. And those are rather special. We're back up. Fully updated, back up and running. Okay, let me chase down some screws and we can finish this repair. Well, this PS5 Digital Edition is fully reassembled and seems to be healthy. Uh, I'm able to play a game, a little farming simulator, and uh, yeah, looks good. So, uh, all right, I hope you liked that one. That was somewhat interesting, educational, entertaining, any of the above. If you did, Please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next repair. So long for now.